Hello and welcome back here. In this video, what we're going to be doing is I'm going to give you some tips on how to use a paintbrush the right way and the most effective way. Okay. So whenever I cut in, I, I normally like to use a, a one and a half inch ang angular brush. Okay. And again, this is the size of a one and a half. Okay, and I use this to cut in against the ceiling, against the door casings, against the baseboards, okay? Now you might ask, why is this brush so small? Well, one of the reasons is when you cut in, you only want to cut in like an a, a inch or two away from the casing because then you're going to use the roller and you're going to roll as close to the casing or to the ceiling or to the baseboard as possible. You're going to try to get that roller within a quarter of an inch, okay? So there's no reason why you really need a huge brush. It, this is a, two, is a two inch brush here, okay? So I would say that this is the, the maximum width that you should use to cut in here. Because again, what we're, whatever you can roll, there's no sense in using a brush to, to cut in e even wider than, than this, and this is an inch and a half, okay? A few of the reasons why is because when you do that, um, when I cut in with this, and if I go any wider than, let's say, than like two inches, then what's going to happen is that that's going to dry, and then when you roll in on top of that, as close to the door casing or baseboard or ceiling as possible, now when you roll on top of that cut line, you're going that area is now going to have two coats versus up against the door casing. That's just going to have one. So just keep that in mind. The wider you cut away from the door casing or the ceiling or on top of the baseboard, the, the wider you cut, then when you go to roll, then when you roll it, now you're going to have two coats, okay? So when you have two coats, then it's going, the uh, coverage is going to be different than when you cut in, and also the sheen is going to be different. So let's say that you're using an uh, eggshell sheen, okay, where you cut in against the door casing and then where you rolled it out there, the sheen is going to be higher because it, ha it has two coats, okay. So you only want to cut in um, as small as an area as possible, then you attack it with the roller here. And when you do that, you save paint. Okay, there's no reason why you should use more paint to cut in an area where you're going to roll it, okay? So that's going to take care of that. We're going to start this off. We're going to, so this is a Worcester Pro, and it's a nylon slash polyester brush here. And this is a good brush, and you can find this right at Home Depot, okay? And this is what the brush looks like here. Okay, it's real thick in the middle, so that tells me the paint or the brush can hold a, a lot of paint. And you can see at, at the end here, it, the uh, bristles turn, turn white. Okay, and, I'm, and what I like about these is that it's white, so that when you continue to paint with these, what's going to happen is the bristles are going to wear down. So if the bristles wear down, to, to, uh, to beyond where it's white, so if all the white is gone, then that's a telltale sign that you need a new brush, okay? And, because um, when the bristles wear down, now you're not able to flex or lay down the paint, okay? Because the shorter that, that the bristles are, the less flex in the brush, and then what you're, what's going to happen is when you go to lay off the paint or feather in the paint, you're actually going to be taking away the paint because you can't, because this is, isn't able to flex down to leave the paint there, okay? So essentially when, when, it, when the brush gets worn down, the brush in turn turns into a blade and the blade is going to take away the paint. It's not gonna lay down or leave the paint there. So you're not gonna be able to get the coverage that you once did when, when the brush was new and the bristles were long and you can see the uh, whiteness of, of the bristles here. Okay, so th this is a great brush. I normally like to use these brushes right here, the uh, Corona Excalibur, and these are the, and this, and this is the uh, Chinex bri bristle brush here. 
and you can see it right here. Okay, and what I love about these is that the, is, uh, this brush is so stiff and these clean up great. Okay, when, when you go to clean up, uh, it, the paint just comes right off of these easier than it does with, with uh, these here. But for the, for the uh, sake of the video, I'm going to go with this brush here. Okay, so I've, I've, I've gotten a lot of comments on whether you should wet the brush first before paint, painting, okay? So you don't want to wet the brush first, okay? And in theory, if you don't know what you're doing, in theory, that would sound like a good I, I idea, okay? When I use a uh, roller or a mini roller, which you've seen me use in the videos, I pre-wet the roller first, and then I spin it out. I get rid of as much of the water as possible, okay? And that's going to, to, uh, to do some good things for the roller. One, it's going to make the roller load up easier, okay? It's going to draw the paint in there, because now the water, the teeny bit of water that is in the roller, is going to act like a vehicle, and it's going to bring the. It's going to load the roller. It's going to bring the paint in, from the outside into the middle of the roller. It's going to do it much quicker than if you didn't pre-wet it. And what it's also going to do, in, when you go to clean up the roller, it's going to clean up easier because the paint was never allowed to dry or stick to the surface of the roller. Okay, so. It does two things, it loads it, and then it cleans up much easier. With a paintbrush, it's not like that. I could see why you would think that, oh, I, I want to wet this first, because it may prevent dried paint from forming in the middle of the roller here, okay? That is not going to happen, okay? If you wet the roller, this, this is why you don't want to, or, when, if you wet the brush, you don't want to do that because if you wet the brush, you're going to get water all throughout the bristles here. Then when you go to load up the paint, the paint and when I load up the paint, I only load up the uh, bottom half of the brush, and that's all where you want to load up. If you wet the brush first, then all that paint is going to travel up the bristles and get into the stock of the brush here, and you do not want that. If you ever paint, paint, paint it with, with an oil paint, the paint, especially if you hold the brush upright, if, if you're cutting in or doing a ceiling, the paint gets into the stock here. Once the paint gets into the stock here, that ruins the brush. Then it dries and it's a pain in the butt to, to, uh, to get the paint out of, of the stock here, okay? So you never want to wet the brush because then the paint is going to flow up and get in way up here. And once that happens, the brush is uh, basically ruined and it's harder to clean out. And once the paint get, gets up here, you're never gonna, going to be able to get 100% of that paint out, okay? So now you may ask, well, how do you pre prevent the crumbs, the dry crumbs that start to form on the brush, okay? Well, one way to, to prevent that is, is to continue to paint. So when, when you're painting, going back and forth, that's going to stay wet. The longer that you can keep it wet, the better off you are. Now, if you're painting and your phone rings and you're working with a latex paint, if you, let, if you set your, your brush down for, for, for more than 30 se seconds, that latex paint is going to start to form a film or dry on the outside of your brush, okay? So if your phone rings and you have to take the call or you have to talk to the homeowner or whatnot, wrap your brush in a piece of painter's plastic, okay? So it's airtight, because it, if you set your brush down for, for more than 30 seconds, the paint is going to start to dry. So whenever you start to work, always just keep on working and if you have to stop, to take lunch or, or take a phone call, wrap your brush in plastic or else the paint will start to dry on the outside here, okay? Now, I always use a cut bucket when I paint, okay? Never, you never want to paint from the paint can, okay? 
That's another thing that I see a lot of painters that really don't know what they're doing. They paint from the can. One of the reasons why you don't want to paint from a can is because when you get the paint, and, and let's say that you're, that you're painting a room that requires a gallon and a half or two gallons of paint, so you've got to get two gallons of paint. You have to box the paint. And what I mean by box is pop both the lids, put it in a five-gallon container, then stir it up so that the color is, is the same. Okay? What people do, or inexperienced homeowners do, is they get two gallons of paint, and they're shaken up at the paint store, and they just assume that both of the colors are identical to one another. And that's not the case. Because when they mix them at the paint store, the, the machine could have slightly put one more drop of black in it, and the paint is a different shade than the other can, okay? So you never want, and so getting back to painting from, from, from the can, I, and when people paint from, from the can, they put their thumb here, and what they do too is they, is they this, is the, 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 this is how far I like to, uh, to load up, okay? And what they do is they drag it on the outside to, to clean up the paint. Now, you don't want to do, do that. A, because when, when you do that, you can see how far the paint has traveled up the brush. By every swipe up, by cleaning off your brush, now the paint is going to dry right here, okay? So you don't want to dip the paint in and then rid the paint on the side of the uh, paint can. And another reason why you don't want to do that is because now you're getting rid of the paint, okay? Now when I transfer this to the wall, I don't have a lot of paint to work with, okay? The right way to do it, if you have to paint from a paint can, which I uh, don't like to do, tap it on either side of the paint can. That'll get rid of the bulk of the paint, but still leave you enough to transfer to the wall. And once you transfer it to the wall, then you use the brush like a tool to, to, uh, to move the paint or transfer it to, to your cut line, okay? So you don't, again, you don't want to do this because then the paint's going to get further up, up the brush and then it's going to really dry fast, okay? Okay, so that's going to take care of that. Now, when, when you clean up, I'm just going to clean, clean this up right here. Whenever you use a sink here, you always want to pre-wet the inside of, of the sink here, okay? So that the paint won't stick to, to the side of it here, okay? And when you clean up, always hold, hold your brush down so the paint won't travel up in, into the stop of the brush. So it won't get way up here. Because once the paint gets way up there, it's a pain in the butt to uh, get rid of, rid of here. So once I have it like that, I'll tap it like 10 times to a one side. I'll do that in slow motion there. And then I'll move it to the other side and, and, tap, and tap it, okay? So I'm tapping it back and forth to get rid of the paint. Now, another no-no is, is turning the brush up like that to get rid of the paint. Now, you have to, to uh, do this, but don't grab the paint. Don't grab the brush here and do this. Because you can see it's going to ruin the, uh, br the uh, bristles. Okay, so what you want to do is hold the top of, of, of the bristles at the top and let the paint or the, the water flow through the, the bristles, okay? And you have to do, to do this to get any of the paint out that is inside of the stock here, okay? So this is usually the, the last move that I do. And I only, do, I only turn the brush upside down when probably 95% of the paint is out of the brush here. So you don't want to do this from like the get-go. You want to keep the brush down to get the bulk of the paint out, okay? So once the brush is clean, now this paint, it really never had a chance to dry to the sides of it here, but if it did, I would use this. This is a stainless steel. Now this is a few years old. You can see how the, uh, how the bristle, how the, 
how the bristles of the uh, stain the steel are tilted back on a 45. And that is because when I clean up, I'm going, I'm stroking down. Okay, and this is, and I turn to the side. So this is the best tool to use to clean up the uh, paintbrush. I know that they sell those, those, uh, those brush clean cleaners and it basically like looks like a comb. Those don't work, okay? Those, those work good if, the, if, there's, if there's dried paint all over the brush and you want to get like a bulk of it out. But whenever you clean up, you should uh, just use this here. You don't want to go too hard. You always just want to go straight down. Okay, so put the, the brush right where the stalk is, right where the metal, and just go down into the sink. Okay, so you would do that, and then you would do what I just showed you, and then turn it all upside down. Okay, now what we're going to do is gonna, we're going to rid the brush of the water here. And what I do is I simply put it in the middle of my palms, and I go back and forth like, like, like that there. Okay. And you can see how, 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 how the brush looks. And then what I do is I use my fingers to conform it like that. And I simply lay it down to dry. Now you don't want to put this back in its container uh, right when it's still wet. You want this to dry out. If you put it, if you put this on right away, it could take days to uh, dry out. And you want the brush to dry out because you don't want to paint with a wet brush because of the reasons that I had just explained. So once you're done with the brush, just simply turn on the uh, water and, and, uh, rin and uh, rinse out the inside and, uh, and use a, uh, a, a, a sponge here to get rid of any paint that got on the sides here, okay? So that's going to take care of that there. Um, so I already have some of the paint in here, okay? And the paint that we're going to uh, work with is the Benjamin Moore Aura paint, and the color is Flower Jar here, okay? So with a dry brush here, I'm going to, I can show you, I, I only put like an, like an inch or two in paint in my paint bucket. That's very important too. Never just take the gallon and pour half of the gallon here. It's unnecessary and it's going, and if you don't know what you're doing and if you dip too deep, now you've, now you've loaded up half the brush here. You don't want to do that. You just want to load up the bottom third of the brush and I'll work with that here. Okay? So um, we're, we're, we're going to go to a different room here and I'll explain more on how to dip the brush and tap it off and lay it down and then transfer the paint. So uh, see you guys in a few. Hello, so well, so welcome back here. Uh, we're going to be de demonstrating how to load up and to transfer the paint and then cut in the paint against this window casing here. So again, I'm, I'm, I'm working with a brand new, it's a Worcester Pro and it's a two inch and it's an angular brush here, okay? So I, and again, I have my paint in my, in my paint bucket right here and there's probably like an inch of paint in here. So whenever you put an inch of paint that guarantees you that you can't screw up when, when, when you go to load up and load up too deep so that the paint starts to travel up, in, up the bristles into the stock and you don't want that. You want to keep the paint on the bottom third. And again, this is a dry brush. Don't wet your brush, okay? So I'm gonna load up here, and you can see right, right there. So there's a lot of paint that's on the brush right now, and I, and I, I don't need all that paint on, on, on the brush. So what I don't want to do is scrape the paint off. By, by if you had a paint can, you would use the inside of the rim. You don't want to do that. All you want to do is you want to tap it to one side, then tap it to the other side, and you could see in my bucket where it taps. So there's one over here and there's one over there. Okay, so that's the paint that, that came off. Okay, and this is what the brush looks like now. I have paint in the middle of, of the brush and I also have a little bit of paint on the outside of the brush and you want that, okay? So again, load, tap, tap, 
and that's and now we're ready to transfer this to the wall here okay now when i transfer it to to the wall i'm going to come probably like a half an inch away and when i do that i'm going to go down fast and then i'm going to push in and go back up and that's going to re to release the paint from my brush onto the wall okay and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to use the brush like a tool to come back in and redistribute or transfer the paint to the left up against the uh, window casing here. Okay, so I'm gonna start right, right now. Down, up, okay? That rids the brush of the paint. Now I'll, I'll gather the paint again that loads my brush up and slowly work it in and pull down. Okay, I'll stop there. Now I'll come back up and feather that side off there and now I'll come into it and slowly go over what I just did with a soft touch to get rid or to make it cover better. Because you could see, before I just did that, you, you can see the uh, white that was peering through there. So if you wanna get in close to uh, take a look at that. I cut in right against the uh, side of the window casing and, and I made it cover in just one coat there, okay? Now I'll load back up here i'll tap it to i to either side and you can see the paint on, on the brush right here and i'll come into it and then go back up okay that gets rid of the paint from my brush transfers the paint to 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 the wall here and now i'll come into it Okay, I'll stop here and then I'll, I'll slowly, I'm laying my knuckles down to leave paint there and feather back into what I just did right there. Okay, so if you want the camera to get closer there. Okay, so I feathered off the paint and you can see how well that that covered in just one coat here. Now we'll come around to the uh, left hand side here and I'm gonna use my left hand to cut in the side of it here. Okay, now I'll come back up. Now I'll come back in, in into it there. Okay, now slight, lightly go back over it. Okay, and that's going to take care of that. Okay, so I'll tap it twice there, come into it, go back up, now come into it. And now, lay down the brush, real easy, come back into what I just did right there, okay? So, for, for, for the camera's sake, you can see how, how, how wide. Now, the reason why I, I used a two inch brush instead of my usual inch and a, and a half brush, is so that shows up better on film here, but when I'm cutting in, my cut, my cut-ins don't get that wide, okay? They're, they're, they're probably like half that because when I roll, I'm gonna roll as close to the wall as, as a possible, okay? Now, if you were just to roll right on top of this with just one coat, this whole area right here 
would be two coats and it would the sheen would be higher and the color wouldn't match with the a quarter of an inch where the roller couldn't get to there okay so we'll come over here and again with my left hand here i'm just gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna try to go at, at my usual pacer and i'll come back into it And, okay, and feather off that side there. And again, you can see that the paint is still on the lower third of the brush. So I'll load up here. Okay, I'll stop there, and you and you and you can see how the white is uh, showing through there. So I'll just lay down the brush real easy, and go back into what I just did right there. Okay, you always want to go back into what I did there because when here I'll just show you right here. So when when I reload, I'm coming in, and you can see it leaves an area where the old color shows through. Okay, so that you're always gonna, gonna get that. So it's always important that when you're done to come back and feather back into and lift off. And that's going to get rid of that mark there. Okay. So again, you, you, you can see how much, how far the paint has come up uh, on the brush. It's still on the lower third of, of the brush, okay. So if you keep the paint on the lower part of your brush and that's all that you're going to work with, the paint never really has a chance to uh, dry out. Now, if I'm painting for a few uh, 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 hours, of course, yeah, then it's going to start to dry out. But when that starts to happen at, after a few hours, then it's time to clean up your brush and then start with a new dry brush. Don't clean up your brush and then use that wet brush because then the paint is going to quickly get up in into the stock of, of the brush here okay so we'll, we'll we'll be back and I'll show you how I clean out the uh, brush here okay so welcome back here we just got done with the, with the cut-ins and one thing I forgot to mention is how I hold the brush okay now this is very important for, for like the amount of control you, de you want to hold the brush right here, okay? So you can see I, how, how I put my fingers. You want, you want to hold the brush on this metal part just to the top of the stock or, or, or where the bristles meet, okay? You don't want to hold the brush back here, okay? Anybody that holds the brush way back here is not allowing themselves to get the, the uh, full amount of, of control that they need, okay? I don't have a lot of control if I hold the brush way out here. This is where I have the most control. So I put my index finger on the side of it here, and then you can see how I have those two fingers there, and then sometimes I'll use my pinky, my pinky to put it to like the bottom here, okay? By, do, by doing this, this is going to allow you the most con control. So don't hold the brush way, way back here. Practice on holding it right up here, so you're able to uh, to press in the uh, br bristles, and you're able to have more con control. Okay. Whereas if you hold it out here, things get pretty sloppy. Okay. So you can see from the cut-ins how much, how far the paint has gone up. Okay. And it hasn't started to to, to a dry yet. Um, but you know what? It, it has just a little bit. I know that, 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 that that's hard on, on, to see on the film here. But in other words, you can see how I keep the paint at the lower end of the brush here, okay? And this is what my brush will, will look like even after um, paint, paint, painting a few hours with it. I keep the brush at the lower end 
of the uh, brush so it doesn't get up into the stock because then it makes a cleanup a nightmare. Okay, so we've gone so we've gone through how to uh, how to hold the brush. We did a, a light video on how to clean up. So now I'm going to show you how I clean up this brush right here. Okay, so if you're using the uh, sink here, you always want to pre-wet the inside of the sink here. Okay, now you don't want to turn the brush upside down. If you do that, all the paint's going to run down and get into the stock, and that's a bad thing. So we're going to turn it on. We're not going to use hot, hot water. We're not going to use cold, cold water. We're going to use right in the middle, okay? So this, again, I'm going to do this. I think you turn this on here as well. So I'm, I'm going to get rid of as much paint as uh, possible here. And since I'm holding the brush down, gravity is going to um, bring all the paint and water down, not up, in, 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 in into the stock here. Okay? So once I have it like, like that there, now I'll, I'll use my, uh, my stainless steel. And I bought a new one here. And this is what a new one looks like. This is an anvil. Okay, and again, it's a stainless steel stripping brush here. Okay, so again, I'm going to angle the brush down and just slowly do that there. Okay, and you can see the paint that is coming out of it right there. Okay, and you, you just want to go real gen gentle. If you go too hard, you're going to uh, ruin the, uh, the, uh, br the, br the uh, bristles here. So once I have the uh, paint that's cleaned off there, now I'll tap it to one side like 10 times and then tap it to the other side and then go back again and go back again there. Okay, so that's going to rid the brush of pretty much like 90% of the paint here. Okay, now since this is a new is a new one, there, there's still a little bit of paint that's right here. Can't really see it on this side, so I'll come back and put it right there. And do the side, and I'm just I'm working down, I'm not going to the side, I'm not going to the side, I'm not going on 45. I'm going straight away from my body. I'm using the inside of the sink here to as a platform, so so that when I scrape, it provides a, uh, a backdrop or a foundation to to scrape away any of the uh, dry paint there. So once I have it like that, I'll, I'll tap, I'll tap it again, okay, and now lastly, I'll turn it upside down, hold the bristles, okay, in the palm of my hand, and then let the water calm, calm down, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do that yeah, a few times there. That's going to ensure that if you did get any of the paint in, in, in the stock, it's going to rid the paint of the stock. So now I'll turn the brush down, down right, place it in the middle of my hands, and work the paint up. Okay, so this vibrates the brush in a, in a circular manner. Okay, so now the paint brush is dry. Now I'm not going to put this brush while it's still wet back in its container here. Then if you did that, the brush does, doesn't get the air that it, it needs to dry out. So what you want to do um, is what I do is after I clean the paint out of here, I'll put it on the inside of my, of my bucket because there's a magnet here, but I don't want to do that because there's paint in there. So all you have to do is, is uh, simply just lie it down, okay? And give that at least a few hours to dry out. And then once it's dried out, then put the cover back on it. And the, you see the hole that's at the top of the brush? You, then you could use, you can put this on like a nail so that the brush hangs in a vertical way so that gravity pulls the bristles straight down, okay? So we'll just set, set, set that aside there. 
Okay, so a few more important things while, while we come to the end of the video. Again, you don't want to wet your brush first, okay? Because when you do that, it ruins the integrity of the bristles. Now the bristles aren't going to work like they did if they're dry. And you, and you can see how, even if I spin this out here, now there's gaps and stuff in there. And again, with a wet brush, now when I dip this in here, okay, the paint's going to load all the way, and it's going to get into the stock. And then if you, if you wipe it on like the side, um, then it's going to further get, get up. So don't ever wet your brush and don't use the inside of a paint can to rid the paint. Because you, you need that paint on the outside to transfer to the wall and then use your paintbrush as a tool to work it to at the corner here. Okay, so I'll just simply clean this brush out here. And since the paint is, is uh, wet, it didn't have a chance to set up or dry, I'll turn it up, upside down. Okay, and spin this out here. Okay, and when it's like that, I, I usually use my fingers to conform the, uh, bri the bristles so that it's nice and tight. So um, those are just some tips and techniques on how to use a paintbrush. Um, so thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you.